Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Wu Can Cook. My name is Wesley, and this is a show where we are slowly cooking our way through all of the food from my childhood. Today, we're diving back into our series dedicated to reproducing foods from the Bay Area restaurant scene with yet another dish from a spot that is an absolute local legend around here, which is Shandong in Oakland, California. For those following along, Shandong is a popular spot in the neighborhood for Chinese noodles, dumplings, and other comfort food classics. We have now done a number of dishes from their menu already, including their hot and spicy chow mein, beef chow fun, and hot and sour soup. More specifically today, though, we're going to be diving into their seafood menu with a shot at their salt and pepper fish, which, as the name implies, is a battered and fried fish fillet seasoned with salt and pepper. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to point out that although we are absolutely going to use both salt and pepper in our stir fry today, I actually think that the name salt and pepper is meant to refer to the use of chili peppers as a means to bring heat to the dish. The Shandong classic is done with large diced jalapenos, but we're going to be doing ours with some Thai chilies today, and I will explain why in a moment. Finally, we'll be rounding this all out with a pound of this gorgeous catfish fillet today, courtesy of Sincere Seafoods in downtown Oakland, and bringing it to life with a simple but effective vinegar-based sauce as well. Okay, so let's get into it. <laughs> Alright, so diving right in, you might notice that our stir fry today is fairly minimalist, which as with any minimalist stir fry, means that there will be all the more emphasis on the ingredients that we do use. So we're kicking things off here as with many of our stir fries with four cloves of crushed and minced garlic, followed by one inch or about one tablespoon of finely minced ginger and the whites of about four green onions, which we're thinly slicing and setting aside. Very often, you might see these three elements come up as the core foundation in a lot of Wu Can Cook stir fry recipes that we build on top of. But today, though, these elements are actually going to be quite present and highlighted since they're one of the only fresh veggies in our stir fry. So, fresh and high quality ingredients are super important here. Then next, I'm taking these reserved greens of my green onions, slicing them up thinly on a bias, and setting them aside for our finishing garnish later on. Next up, moving on to the only other vegetable in our stir fry today are my Thai chilies. This is six of them for a medium heat that I'm de-stemming and slicing up thinly. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Shandong classic version of this dish uses large diced jalapenos with seeds still intact, giving those peppers a decent amount of presence and heat. So if you're trying to stick with the classic, definitely go with jalapenos. Today, I'm using Thai chilies mostly because the jalapenos at the market didn't look super hot at the time, but you can also use a Serrano or Fresno chili for a similar gentle but present heat, or swap in a bell pepper or de-stemmed jalapeno to remove the heat entirely. Either way, the general takeaway here should be that depending on your preference and tolerance for heat, this should be the element that you choose to tweak. Finally, last up, I'm slicing up about a quarter of a head of cabbage, which we're going to place underneath our finished fried fish to catch any residual oils, and we're moving on to our fish next. Okay, so for our fish today, I'm using a pound of catfish fillet once again, courtesy of Sincere Seafoods in Oakland. Definitely check them out if you're local. I'm going with catfish partially because I believe that's what they use at Shandong. It's also a very common fish to use in Chinese food and is usually one of the fishes that you see swimming around in those fish tanks in the restaurants. In any case, once again, you should use whatever looks fresh because the freshness of the fish that you use is gonna be a lot more important than the type of fish that you choose. I'm large dicing these into one inch pieces and setting aside. Then moving on to our batter, I'm starting off by whisking up a single egg before adding it to my catfish, then seasoning this with a healthy pinch of kosher salt and a teaspoon of white pepper as promised. Then next we're adding in a quarter cup of cornstarch for a nice thin breading, and finally rounding this all out with a quarter teaspoon of baking powder to give our fish a bit of extra puffiness from its alkaline. Next up, we're moving on to our sauce element, which as you'll notice is very simple and is mostly just a combination of acids to brighten up our finished dish. This is two tablespoons each of rice vinegar and Shaoxing wine to start, followed by a single tablespoon each of sesame oil and white sugar for a little bit of sweetness. Then I'm mixing this all up until combined and we're heading over to the stove. 
Over on the stove, I've got my wok heating up as hot as possible, and then I'm adding a full cup and a half of peanut oil for our shallow fry, and as always, long yao for that nice non-stick surface. Then next, here's my catfish going in about 10 pieces at a time, being very careful not to overload the wok so that we can keep it nice and hot. I'm letting this fry for three to five minutes until golden brown and agitating frequently so that nothing burns here. Then I'm repeating this with my remaining catfish until everything is nice and fried up. Mine took three batches all together, so be patient and don't overload that wok or you'll end up with some soggy and mushy catfish, which is not attractive. Next up, moving on to our stir fry, I'm removing my fryer oil, wiping down the wok, then reheating and adding an additional four tablespoons of peanut oil and doing one more long yao. Then going in here first are my aromatics. This is my garlic, ginger, and the whites of my green onions, which I'm blooming for 15 seconds until nice and fragrant. Then we're shifting everything to one side and adding in our Thai chilies next, making sure that these get good solid contact with the wok surface to release that capsaicin and heat before tossing it to combine. Then next I'm adding in my sauce element here. Remember that this is mostly composed of vinegars and acids, which means that we want to give it a decent amount of time in the wok to let some of that acidity burn off or else it's going to be pretty abrasive in the finished dish. So I'm tossing this to combine and letting it go for a solid three to four minutes until reduced by nearly 30% or so before adding in my fish. Then I'm giving this all a very quick toss for no more than 30 seconds or so before removing from heat. Any longer than that and we'll just be contributing to a soggy piece of catfish. Finally, I'm plating this on top of my shredded cabbage to catch any residual fryer oil, or you can also eat this with rice too. Then I'm finishing with the greens of my green onions and we're ready to eat. All right, so I mentioned this earlier and I'll say it again, but the simplicity of this dish is truly my favorite part of a salt and pepper fish like this. Since there are no bold flavors or big umami drivers in our dish today, like doubanjang or hoisin sauce or even just soy sauce, it really just leaves everything out on display, which I love. I know a lot of our stir fries have a tendency to bury those more subtle elements like Shaoxing wine or Thai chili, but this dish really lets all of those elements breathe, so if you're ever wondering what those things truly taste like, definitely give this dish a try. It also means that if there ever was a time to use that high quality cooking sherry that you've been saving, this is the chance to do it. Our catfish is amazingly crispy from that shallow fry, then puffy and airy from our egg and baking powder, and finally perfectly tender on its interior because we got our hands on some really good catfish today. Finally, the last thing that I'll mention is that I know that we have done some fairly challenging and time-consuming recipes of late, but I actually thought that this one was pretty simple, approachable, and easy to knock out in about 30 minutes or so, so if you're looking for a quick fix for dinner and can get your hands on some fresh fish, definitely give this one a shot. Okay, so that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you give this one a shot. For those who are new to the channel, this one is part of a larger series that we've been doing that's dedicated to the Bay Area restaurant scene. So definitely check that out next if you haven't yet because there's a lot of these. For the Bay Area locals, Shandong is located on 10th and Webster and again is an absolute local legend. So definitely check them out next if you haven't yet because they're pretty amazing. Also, if you are local, the Wu Can Cook pop-up is kicking things off this month every Friday at Federation Brewing in Oakland. So come by and say hi if you can. More about that at wucancook.com slash eats. Finally, for those who have been watching for a while, make sure that you are also subscribed and hit the bell as well. Only about 30% of you all who are watching are also actually subscribed, which if you're like me, there's a pretty good chance you don't know that you're not subscribed, but it actually helps out quite a bit. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share, be nice interneters, and I'll see you soon. Bye.